Exercise 18C, stationary points. So stationary points are any parts of the graph where the gradient is equal to zero. The flat parts, if you like. In the past, we have simply just said turning points. However, they uh, stationary points is sort of like the big umbrella term for turning points, points of inflection, and just generally any points where the gradient is flat and equal to zero. So therefore, if we were to find the derivative and make that equal to zero, we can use this to find turning points or points of inflection. This is maybe not so useful for parabolas and things like that because we can just use the turn, uh, we can just convert it into turning point form. However, this can be very useful when we've got cubics or quartics or large polynomials where we are trying to find the turning points. So let's start with question one. Find the coordinates of the stationary points of each of the following functions. So we're gonna find the derivative, make that equal to zero, solve for x, and then substitute that value back into the original equation to find the y value. I'm gonna start with c, and I'm gonna find the derivative of z equals x to the power of four minus 32x plus 50. So I found the derivative. Please note that I wrote dz dx. That's because it's not a y, it is a z. Always make sure that you take care to check your variables. Now I've let it equal to zero, and now I'm going to solve for x to find the coordinates of the turning points, or stationary points in this case might be. So we found that the uh, x value is equal to two, and now we just need to substitute that into the original equation to find the y value. And so the y coordinate, I know that we've dealt with the z's here, but the, the y ordinate of the second coordinate is two. So therefore the stationary point for this first one is at two, two. We're gonna do the exact same procedure for uh, option D here. You'll notice here that T is greater than zero in this case. So that means if we happen to uh, stumble upon any T values that are less than zero, we can discard them. So in this option, this is not quite as simple as the other one because we have ended up with a quadratic equal to zero, and we can't just put the terms on all the numbers on one side and all the t's on the other, so we'll need to factorize this. So we factorized and we've solved. Now you'll notice that one of the t's is less than zero, but it is not in the domain because we've asked for t's greater than zero, so we can discard this one and then just substitute in the other one. So my stationary point here is at 448. Question four, the curve with equation y equals ax squared plus bx has a gradient of three at the point two, negative two. Find the values of a and b, find the coordinates of the turning point. So we have got a coordinate and we've also got this gradient and we've got an A and B. You could possibly guess that this is going to end up being a simultaneous equation. So we're going to have to set up two simultaneous equations. One of them will be the original equation just with two and negative two substituted in. The other will be when we do the derivative of y equals ax squared plus bx with x equals two and then the derivative equaling to three. So I've substituted the coordinate in there into the original equation, just like I normally would with a simultaneous equation. And I managed to get this as negative one equals two a plus b. If you got negative two equals four a plus two b, that's still fine. I've just divided each by a common factor of two just to make the addition and multiplication simpler. So normally we'd have a second coordinate to substitute in, but we don't this time. We've only got the fact that it has a gradient of three uh, at the point two, negative two. So in other words, when the derivative is equal to three, the x value will be equal to two. So we'll need to do the derivative of this formula, this ax squared plus bx, and substitute accordingly. So what I've done is I've taken the derivative of that formula, 
I've made it equal to 3 because it's ten, that it has a gradient of 3 at the point 2, negative 2. And so when x is equal to 2, it has a gradient of 3. That's what this is suggesting here. So that's exactly what I've done. And I've got 4a plus b equals 3. I can now solve the equations simultaneously. I would suggest using the elimination method. So we have solved simultaneously. Uh, we've got an A value equaling to 2. I then, uh, once I did that process of elimination, I then substituted 2 into one of the equations, in particular equation 1, because that would be smaller and have smaller numbers, and I've got B equals negative 5. So now I can put this back into my original equation and then find the values of the turning point. So to find the turning point for this, you can make get the derivative, make it equal to zero, or since it's a quadratic, it will you can go and factorize it and find the points in between the x-intercepts, whatever is your poison. Um, if it were me though, I would probably just do the derivative because it's going to be a little bit easier algebraically, but you are very welcome to do either one of those methods. And so there is our derivative, So and there is our turning point. So we found that the turning point uh, for, this, uh, for this equation is when x equals to 5 quarters. I found that by making the derivative equal to 0. Then all I had to do was to substitute that, that back into the original equation. And so that got me 5 over 4 and negative 25 eighths.